Welcome to a new episode from English Plus Podcast. Today's episode is all about animals and we will focus our attention on this lovely pet that a lot of people like, of course, and that is dogs. We will talk about dogs. We will talk about what the main kind of dogs are, what makes dogs the best pets, where you can get a puppy, how you can care for a puppy, how you can train a puppy, and where dogs originally came from. We will talk about all these things, so without further ado, let's start talking about dogs. And remember, this is a listening episode, so if you would like to practice while you're listening, you can take the link that will take you to our website. You will find in the custom post for this episode a PDF practice worksheet. You can download this PDF practice worksheet, and you will find listening practice exercises if you would like. Or if you're just here to enjoy, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much for picking our podcast to listen to and let me not waste any more of your time and let's start talking about dogs. You may have a dog for a pet at your house. Maybe you have some friends who have dogs. No one knows how many millions of people in the world have dogs for pets. More than one million new purebred dogs get registered with the American Kennel Club, AKC, each year. The AKC is the main organization for purebred dogs in the United States. A purebred is a dog whose parents and ancestors all came from the same breed of dog. A dog of mixed breeds is sometimes called a mongrel or a mutt. Now, what are the main kinds of dogs? Beginning hundreds of years ago, breeders mated male and female dogs that had certain qualities or traits. They wanted the puppies to have the same traits as the parents. Dogs that developed these traits were called breeds. The AKC recognizes about 150 breeds. It puts these breeds into seven groups called terrier, working, sporting, hound, herding, toy, and non-sporting dogs. Terriers have stiff, wiry coats. Terriers were bred to hunt and catch foxes, badgers, and rabbits. Working dogs are obedient and strong. The Alaskan Malamute is a working dog bred to pull sleds over ice and snow. Sporting dogs such as pointers and golden retrievers were bred to bring back ducks and other wild birds that hunters shoot. Beagles and other hounds have a great sense of smell to help hunters track down rabbits and other small animals. Collies, Welsh corgis, and other herding dogs were bred to keep farm animals from straying. Some toy dogs, such as chihuahuas, were bred to be small companions for people. Non-sporting dogs are all the other breeds, from spotted Dalmatians to curly-haired poodles. Now, what makes dogs the best pets? There is no one dog that is a good pet for all people. People like dogs for different reasons. People who live in an apartment or small house often want small dogs. Before choosing a breed, find out how much care and training it requires. Some breeds require daily brushing. Some breeds are very energetic and need a lot of exercise. Some breeds are easier to train than others. Think about how much time you and your family want to spend taking care of the dog. Now, where can you get a puppy? Maybe you want a purebred puppy because you can tell how the dog will look and act when it grows up. Ask a veterinarian or kennel club for the name of a good dog breeder. Do not be surprised if the breeder asks you a lot of questions. Good breeders want to be sure that their puppies go to good homes. Or maybe you want a mixed breed dog. You can find mixed breed puppies at animal shelters and by looking at newspaper ads. Look for a clean, happy, outgoing puppy. Any puppy should be at least eight weeks old before you take it away from its mother. And now, how do you care for a puppy? Take your new puppy to a veterinarian for a physical examination and have it checked for roundworms. Puppies also need vaccinations to protect them against several diseases, including rabies. All puppies and dogs need three things every day. Plenty of fresh drinking water, nutritious food, and exercise. If your dog has short hair, you should brush it once or twice a week. 
If your dog has long hair, you might need to brush it every day. You need to give your dog a bath only when it is dirty. And now how do you train a puppy? You should house break your puppy and train it to walk on a leash. You can house break a puppy by first training it to go on newspapers. You can also house break a puppy by putting it in a crate or cage for short times. A dog will not soil in the place where it lives. Whether you use newspapers or a cage, be sure to take the puppy outdoors often. Most puppies are ready to begin obedience school when they are six to eight months old. They will learn basic commands such as sit, stay, heel, come, and down. And now, for the final part of this listening, let's talk about where dogs came from originally. Now, dogs are relatives of wolves that once roamed all over Europe, Asia, and North America. No one knows when or how people began to live with dogs. They were living with dogs at least 10,000 years ago. The ancient Egyptians knew how to breed dogs. Over thousands of years, dogs became helpers and pets. The dogs helped shepherds to herd sheep. Dogs helped people hunt for food. They helped guard homes and farms. Today, dogs do all kinds of work. Guide dogs lead people who are blind. Trained dogs alert deaf people to common household sounds such as the telephone or doorbell ringing. Other dogs are trained to pick up objects for handicapped people. One of the best roles that dogs still play is that of loyal friend and pal. So I hope you learned a couple of things about dogs you didn't know about. But now, because this is English Plus Podcast, we are crazy about new words and keywords. So we will talk about keywords we can find in this episode. But before we do that, let me remind you that you can take the link you will find in the description and go to our website, englishpluspodcast.com, where you will find everything you need to practice the things you're learning here. From interactive activities to a PDF downloadable worksheet, all for free, of course, you can use all these things on our website to improve your English if you like. But again, if you're just here to have fun, you're more than welcome and thank you for picking our podcast. And one more thing, if you like the content we're creating and you would like to support us on Patreon, there's also another link. You can take this link and go to our Patreon page and become our patron and support English Plus Podcast and help us reach more people and create more episodes. Now, with that being said, let's move back and talk about the words or the key words we have in this text about dogs. Now, let's start with the very first word, and that is purebred. When we said more than one million new purebred dogs get registered with the American Kennel Club, what do we mean by a purebred? Now, here we're talking about dogs, but we can use that for other animals as well. A purebred animal is one whose parents and ancestors all belong to the same breed, and that is a purebred. It's not a mixed breed, like we said later in this listening. And that brings us to the word ancestors. What do we mean by ancestors? Your ancestors are the people from whom you are descended. And of course, we can use that for animals and plants as well. And then the word breed itself, what does it mean? When we say all came from the same breed of dog, what is the meaning of breed? A breed of a pet animal or farm animal is a particular type of it. For example, terriers are a breed of dogs, like we just said here. So here, this is what we mean by a breed. Now, the next word, we talked about terriers, actually. We said that they have stiff, wiry coats. What is the meaning of wiry? Now, something such as hair or grass that is wiry is stiff and rough to touch. And this is something in common in the terrier breed. They have wiry coats. Then we talked about working dogs, and we said that working dogs are obedient and strong. What is the meaning of obedient? A person or animal who is obedient does what they are told to do, and that is an obedient dog. And then we talked about herding dogs and that they are bred to keep farm animals from straying. What is the meaning of straying? Now, to stray, if someone strays somewhere, they wander away from where they are supposed to be. So here, sometimes, farm animals, they go to places where they're not supposed to be. And herding dogs help you keep farm animals from straying. And then we talked about toy dogs, like the chihuahuas. And we said that they were bred to be small companions. 
What is the meaning of a companion? A companion is someone who you spend time with or who you are traveling with. Now, in this case, of course, who you spend time with, a person who is with you. And in this case, it can be a dog as well. It can be a pet, an animal. The animal sometimes is a better companion, to be honest. Well, that's about companion. And then when we talked about where you can get a puppy, we recommended asking a veterinarian or kennel club for the name of a good dog breeder if you want a purebred puppy. But what is the meaning of a veterinarian? Ask a veterinarian. What is a veterinarian? Or who is a veterinarian? A veterinarian, or for short we say a vet, is a person who is qualified to treat sick or injured animals. And then we continued on and talked about what puppies need, and we said that puppies also need vaccinations. What is the meaning to vaccinate, from which comes the noun vaccinations? Now, if a person or animal is vaccinated, they are given a vaccine, usually by injection to prevent them from getting a disease. Then we talked about what a dog or a puppy needs. We said three important things every day. Plenty of fresh drinking water, nutritious food, and exercise. Now let's talk about nutritious. When we say nutritious food, it's not just any food. It should be nutritious. Nutritious food contains substances which help your body to be healthy. And in this case, of course, we're talking about the puppy, but the puppy is just like us. It needs nutritious food which contains substances that help its body to be healthy. So that is nutritious. And now for our next word, housebreak. We said you should housebreak your puppy. What is the meaning of housebreak? To housebreak a puppy or in this case another pet because we can use it for other pets as well. To housebreak a puppy or a pet is to train a pet to live cleanly in a house by excreting outdoors or in a designated place. And now for the last word for this episode, and that is roam. We said dogs are relatives of wolves that once roamed all over Europe, Asia, and North America. What is the meaning of roam? If you roam an area or roam around it, you wander or travel around it without having a particular purpose. And that is the meaning of roam. And here Rome is not like the capital of Italy, of course. It's R-O-A-M. Anyway, if you want to find the text, you can go to our website and find the whole text so you can check the spellings of the words and a lot of other things. Now, with that being said, that'll be all for today. I hope you found this episode useful. I hope you learned a thing or two about dogs. And I hope you found some of the key words we mentioned here useful for you and maybe new. So with that being said, I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. This is your host, Danny. I'll see you next time.